how well do you remember 2014? especially if you're a Tennessee Volunteer fan. Butch Jones is in his second year in Knoxville. He's the head coach there. He was successful at Cincinnati. He was successful at the stop before that at Central Michigan, I believe it was. And it looks like, it looks like he's starting to turn things around. So I was at this game in 2014. It was Tennessee at Georgia. It was uh, September 27th, 2014, for those keeping record at home. And Tennessee pushed Georgia. They didn't beat them. They pushed them. They easily covered, I would imagine. It was a 35-32 to 32 final. Rick is still at Georgia for this game. And remember, this was a year where Georgia was pretty highly ranked. Tennessee still getting their act together. And so people left that game thinking, you know, good for Tennessee. And collectively, the mentality post-game was, whether you be in the news conferences, talking to the players outside the locker room, talking to media off the record that covered the Tennessee beat, the general feeling was, you know, there was a lot to take away from this loss that is going to be very relevant down the road if and when they end up being a contender. That was the feel, okay? So I'm on the field, totally empty stadium. I'm doing some stand-ups post-game to send back to Columbus for the news station that I was working at. So I'm sitting there fumbling papers around, and um, I was in between the visitor's locker room tunnel and the home locker room tunnel. Since then, they've switched it in the way that the stadium's configured. But back then... You know, you had tunnel here, tunnel here. This is where Georgia comes out. This is where Tennessee comes out. I'm kind of standing in the middle of that. I'm right near where the goalpost would be. And so my peripheral vision, I see an orange polo kind of emerge. And it's empty. I mean, even the stadium workers have left. It's, it's two hours after the game. The buses for Tennessee have already left. And I see someone emerge over there. I'm not paying much attention, but I, I kind of look. I double take, triple take. It's Butch Jones. He's all by himself. He doesn't have any of his assistants with him. He doesn't have, uh, the, the SID is nowhere to be found. It's just Butch Jones. And I swear to you, he walks out of the tunnel. He's, he's in his suit. He's got his leather briefcase. And he sets it down. And just imagine seeing this. I didn't say a word. I just watched. And Butch Jones just puts his bag down. And he stands there for, it seems like, two or three minutes. And he just looks around. He stands there with his arms crossed. And he just looks around. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what was going through his head. What I perceive to be going through his head is this is a guy who is finally letting the noise die down in his head, and they were competitive here today, but they lost. But I guarantee he's standing over there thinking ahead 20 years to when he's writing his autobiography, and he's writing a chapter of it right now in his head. And that chapter is saying, as I stood there and the smoke had cleared and the dust had settled and we came up just short, I stood outside that tunnel and thought, this is the last time that we're ever going to walk out of this place with a team not as talented as them, and the last time we're ever going to walk out of here coming up just that much short. That's how I imagined it. Fast forward two years, please, because Tennessee comes back to Athens. Again, I'm there. This, mind you, is the week after we had been at Jordan-Hare Stadium where Les Miles won a game, then they overturned it, and LSU lost the game, and Les Miles got the ax. So it's been an eventful week, and now we go to Athens, and it's Tennessee at Georgia. Tennessee is undefeated. It's October 1st. It's 2016. You remember how this one turned out? Well, if you don't, let me refresh your memory. There were uh, under, it was under a minute to go, and it was Jacob Eason to Riley Really. Georgia takes the lead. Penalty sets Georgia up or Tennessee up with good field position. Josh Dobbs to Juwan Jennings a couple of plays later. That was the result. Tennessee, last ditch, heave to the end zone. I'm just off camera right there. Don't worry about me. Worry about the player. Juwan Jennings catches the touchdown. And it's a true, watch the celebration, watch the ACL almost get torn. Oh, so close. All right, so good for Butch. So now we fast forward two years. He's not standing there all by his lonesome in the tunnel anymore. Now he's finally come back to Georgia and he's won the game. And I followed him around just like this. Remember, folks, if you're going to film, film landscape. Don't film right side up, film landscape so we can actually use it. And so I'm filming Butch Jones and I just followed him. I probably got 10 minutes worth of footage on the field. And so I went from the dog pile with Juwan Jennings and I'm just filming Butch Jones because I already knew in the moment, man, this is what I'm going to talk about on the show tomorrow night. I remember all the way two years ago what he was like here and now they pulled it off finally. They remain undefeated. They were about to send to number nine or ascend to number nine in the country after that game. That's right. Butch Jones had Tennessee in the top 10. They weren't always a dumpster fire like maybe the revisionist part of your history in your mind would indicate to you. So I follow Butch Jones. At the time, I was at a local station in Columbus, Georgia, and we had 
kind of neon orangish polos that we wore for the station. In other words, I looked just like a Tennessee staffer, which was very convenient because I follow Jones and I'm right behind him and I walk up Tennessee's tunnel and halfway not realizing what I'm doing, I went right into Tennessee's locker room. Locker rooms on the road and at home in regular season play are closed to everyone but essential personnel and players. But it didn't matter because in all the hoopla and uh, the celebration and the fact that I was wearing a matching shirt, I got right into their locker room. Now, of course, I turned right around, being the responsible citizen that I am, and got out of there. But that was what the scene was two years later. And I'll never forget, he comes right back out there again. Same tunnel, maybe an hour later, not two hours later. This time, he had an entire entourage with him, and I think one or two of them lit up a cigar there, and they just stood there, and five feet, I kid you not, from a couple of years ago, where he had stood there in silence. He had all the backslappers and attaboys and entourage around him that you'd ever want. Next week, they go to A&M, lost in overtime. Week after that, against Alabama, splattered all over the place. The week after that, they go to South Carolina, they lose. They finish 8-4. and four. The following year, he's fired. And so the Butch Jones era ends. But I'll never forget, and this is why, if you've ever seen Shawshank Redemption, there's a quote from Morgan Freeman, red, because he's Irish, that really rings true in life and in college football. When Andy gets jumped in the laundry room and he's, he's narrating the story, he says, I'd love to tell you that Andy fought the good fight and they left him alone, but prison is no fairy tale world. Well, neither is major college football, because right at that moment, the writers of the world, the storytellers of the world, they were already crafting the story of Butch Jones and the rise back to prominence of Tennessee football, and boom, 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 three losses later, no one's telling that story anymore, and three losses later, you're on the hot seat, and a year after that, they've run you out of town. That's how quickly it changes. That's why the ones who can sustain success, you really need to celebrate them because it's really, really, really hard to do.